Good morning, everybody. Thanks for joining on day seven. I hope you all had a good start in the day already. I actually had, and I'm super motivated to kick off the stream today and making some progress in our game dev environment. So let me just adjust the microphone a little bit. So yeah, <clears throat> let us get started. I think we can go over to the codex. Yeah, let's go to the codex. Let's start as usual with a short recap of yesterday. Yesterday was day six. We did a small retrospective in the beginning of day six. We uh, thought about what went well, what went bad <clears throat> the last week and created some action points. And I'm already working on one of these action points because uh, at the start of the stream, I always would like to have a small recap and afterwards we would like to do more planning. So as yesterday, we also did some uh, more planning and uh, created some cards we can work off today. And then we actually started with the implementation yesterday of the placements. Um, within the placements, we created a data layer for our tile maps and uh, we created uh, some unit tests for that. We created a grid which actually holds our data layer of the tiles. And yeah, we uh, actually made some coding progress there. And this uh, yeah was quite necessary. And also today, I think we will have to continue on that. Um, we will go more deeply into programming today because I would like to uh, to fetch out some functions from the map and uh, bring it to the grid and uh, writing some new components. But we will see it in a minute. Let's for now just uh, archive this card because we are done with which day six? Yes, this will archive it. So let's head over to day uh, switch day seven, which is today. Yeah, as said, uh, today I would like to create a highlight for the placement and display it. Maybe we can include some animations. Um, the unit is, placement is there, but <clears throat> I actually want to create some other stuff beforehand. I would like to have a standalone tile factory component. I would like to have a standalone JSON parser component. And I would like to, we can first then create the highlights and I would like to have another map loading which is actually a challenge map so this is my plan for today um let us go yeah let's right head into the project planning a little bit because as uh, yesterday said we need to make a plan we need to have a plan <laughs> we need to plan a little bit more um my solution for this is i would like to take the first uh, 10 minutes of the stream yeah, 10 to 15 minutes. So let us say uh, 10, quarter past 10. Um, <clears throat> until quarter past 10, we use our time and do actually some planning. So we have every day 10 minutes for planning. And I hope over the time we can redefine more cards by this approach. And maybe then we will have in future a little bit a little bit less project planning we will see how we can make of it so we are still on coding we have create a map node this is I mean, let me see this is the tile map this is tile map data layer create the tile map in godot which is storing which has five sub cards and this was the tile card which was which also belongs to the tile map where we was in it, but this is already finished. I'm a little bit confused in codex why he is um, showing me cards which are actually finished. This uh, is a little bit confusing for me because I would suggest or would <laughs> Would nevertheless, I would like to see only the cards 
which are actually not finished. Because I always have to archive this card. But as you can see, they create. Uh, maybe it's because I have uh, added it to a milestone for me yesterday. I delete the milestone. But it doesn't change anything. This is sorted by the priority. Collapse hero card. Ah, okay. This is. Uh, this is the view I would like to have. Okay, so we can only see the hero cards here, and the subtasks are hidden in here. And this is, uh, for my experience, uh, it's a little bit better to work. So what I have done yesterday was I had created a time map data layer with the. Uh, with this, I'm not sure why I haven't added it to the S subcard because it's a subcard for here. Um, we're still on the tile map, <coughs> and uh, I would like to have now a little bit more tasks because we, in general, would like to have a little bit more to work on, and uh, the tile map is, of course, just one part of it and we have a little bit to think about how we would like to structure this in future because as I said I would like to have a create factory so I will just do this as subcards um, tile factory uh, I would like to have a right a factory pattern component which creates tiles which creates the tiles with its attributes um the save this is the tile factory then i would like to have a json json parser component create um JSON parser component uh go dot component which takes care of all which takes care of parsing our map JSON data. Um then what I have said we would like to do I would like to, this is the tile map, then I would like to add a new hero card, which is actually a challenge map. I need to open the Android Studio to see how it was called. Because we have different missions here, these are all our missions, and I would like to have the, no, this is tutorial, this is the rising gods, plague of insects and mushroom hunting. Okay, this, I would like to go with the mushroom hunting. So challenge map mushroom challenge map mushroom hunting. Um, bring in the JSON of the mushroom hunting map and draw it like the first mission map. Um, I would like to add the challenge mode to continue working on this approach. So this is the challenge mode. Let's go back to the Twitch. I need to have the overview what I wanted to do. So I have the tile factory. I have the parser. We need the highlight placements and the animation. I have forgotten that one. So what we would like to add here is placement zones. We need to fetch the placement zones out and highlight, highlight them on the map where units can be placed. Okay, so this we also have. <clears throat> so this is just our task for today. We have five minutes left for planning. And I would like to go over to the game design document. 
And there we have the project concept. Let me just check it out. What I have written so far, I have the interface music sound, units, races. These are the improvements. What I would like to do is the, I would like to add the gameplay. Yeah, I think gameplay is the right card. So the problems we have stated is the combo system isn't rewarding. Um, ideas, add new abilities, improve the comp. Yeah, that's right. And uh, how I would call it, I would say things to add, things to add. And here I would like to add the new core loop new core gameplay loop so this is just a placeholder because i would like to add a new card which is a doc type uh, which is a no a doc type card and this is core gameplay loop this is our core gameplay loop for the future and i thought about it a lot and uh, i came up with the idea yesterday and the day before I would like to stick, I would like to stick on the challenge maps as they were intended in the original Timber Tales version. You, <coughs> you pick an army measured by size, points, whatever and you progress through different challenge maps until you lose so this is the very short description of the core description um, <clears throat> so let us say that's the that's the summary so I would like to stick on the challenge maps as they were intended in the origin. You pick an, a an army measured by size points, whatever, and you uh, progress through different challenge maps until you lose. So what we then have is maps. Um, so let us say different maps. Um, <coughs> we will have to, we will have to add different maps with different events different map events um, I can also imagine having something like boss encounters at the end of at the end of a streak of three or four whatever so this is very uh, i don't have the details yet it's 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 just in game design document and i just want to write down some thoughts for us for the future and uh, what i would like to do with this challenge mode is the original challenge mode was planned as uh, you pick an army which you like and then you go through the maps and uh, until you lose and the, the AI becomes too strong for you. And then you are actually getting some kind of reward. That was the original one, but I would like to do it more. So me, maybe say it's the goal is uh, I would like to make a more roguelike approach to the challenge mode this means we pick an army consisting of a specified amount of units heroes would like to have the units as heroes in future so we picking an army consisting of our specified amount of units and heroes which will progress through the challenge boss maps with each map with each success we can get more uh, abilities points 
or whatever to spend and maybe heal ourselves or getting new skills. Hey, Donatze is the boy. Thanks for following. Good to see you again. How is it going? Sorry that I'm here English on this uh, <laughs> stream, even if I know that you are speaking German, but I hope it's no problem for you. So uh, the goal for the for the game is, or the overhaul I would like to do in, in future is, I would like to go a more roguelike approach that we pick an army consisting of, I would say three heroes at the moment. So my amount is uh, uh, considering three at the moment of units heroes and then we will process to our different challenge maps for now we will just use the original maps we had in in the original timber tales version and i just will build them off there but of course in future i would like to add more maps and new maps and more random maps to make it more random and then we will have to some kind of approach that we can go with each uh, success of the map we can get some more abilities or we earn some points we can then spend to actually uh, to actually spend for maybe healing maybe for improving our skills so this is the just the go summary for that um, then we of course will have different maps as I have said And this is the, the rough uh, concept for things I would like to add in the core gameplay for today or for now. For today we won't get it, but <laughs> no, I want to mark the ticket. This is this one core gameplay loop. So this is the core gameplay loop I'm actually considering. So our project planning time is uh, up for today. Let's go into the project. We at least defined a little bit of the gameplay already. That's pretty cool. So let us start with uh, what with 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 the tie factory component. Yeah, I think that's that's quite nice. So let us go to the tile map data layer. No, the tile factory. Let us start with that one. Uh, let's give. Where is it? Go dot. Where is the project? There's the project. So let us uh, jump off into the project <clears throat> and let us see what I would like to do. So the problem I have at the moment or I'm looking at is this is our map code and our map code is already quite big, which is already 90 lines of code here. And we are doing too much stuff now in the map. Um, we having our JSON data here, we having our tile size here, and we have our different tiles here. What we are doing at the moment is, if the map is loaded, we go over and pass our JSON, and out of our JSON we are creating our tile map by this function. And as you can see, I hinted already that I would like to refactor that, and that's actually what we would like to do today as first. So let us uh, just close everything else and go back here. So what I would like to do with this create function is instead of having a create tile function into the map, um, I would like to have a, a factory component inside the map, which is handling the creation of our tiles. So what we are doing is we create a new 2D node out of the map and we name it tile factory. Then we actually make an own scene out of it. Uh, I always can't find it. Where is it? Branch SC. Yes, that's right. Uh, so scene, and this is the tile factory. I At the moment, I just save it over there. Then we go into that, into the tile factory, and we add a new script for it. We would like to have the scripts all in the same place for the scripts 
and it's called tile factory gd so we give it also a class name which is the common sense i'm doing at the moment so i have just some naming for myself otherwise all of them would just call be called node 2d but i don't want to have that i want my own class names and the second thing i would like to do is as usual i would like to write a test for every new script we do so we also create a new test file for the tile factory because there we can define how the factory should work so we need to extend from the gut test here and we need to go back over there and then we will have our first test which is func test something like test create <coughs> tile which is already quite big but for now we just do it as a skeleton method here and there we will start with the implementation in a minute so just let us just get a small overview again we have the create function in the map where the tile is created and we get some parameters with the position x with the position epsilon the cell coordinate x and the cell coordinate y and the image id <coughs> this is absolutely fine and we already know that we would like to have this function so what we can do is we just copy it over here we go into an, our test file and we say we of course need our for our tile factory and the tile factory is our in our scenes it's the tile factory and then we have the i should name it scene because it's the scene and then we have the tile factory instance so i stressed it out already yesterday as usual <laughs> name your variables in a sense that it makes sense because it made everything it, it makes everything so much easier so here we are loading the scene and that's the why i call it scene and here it's an instance so that's why we call it an instance and then we know we can work with the instance instead of the scene and we know which variable just has stores which value so what we would like to have is now we would like to have a factory instance which is actually capable of creating a tile so we would like to have a function in the factory which is called create tile and then we already know that we want would like to have a position x we would like to have a position epsilon we would like to have a cell x and we would like to have a cell y and we would like to have an image id which is actually in string yes so what i can already define is i can say we have something like that so this is the very very basic we just instantiate everything with the zero when we now of course run the test we of course will fail because this function is not existing we will implement this in a minute i have to take a short break i'm back in a minute so please stay tuned we will go on in a minute
So I'm back. Sorry for the interruption. Let us continue. So what have we done so far? We would like to create a tile factory, which is just a function we extract out of our map, which is able to create a tile instead of having this responsibility in the map. We would like to have it in our own component. And this is what we are doing the tile factory instance for. So we have a create function over there and now we need to implement it like that. So what I just do is I copy it over here from here to here. And then just let's stick to the pattern we have already because the parameters are more or less the same. Will be the same. So this is just the basic function of that. Then we run again the tests on the gut and as we can see we have a risky test there because it's not asserting anything. And we would like to assert that if we create a tile, we actually get a tile back. And then we would like to assert equal. And now I have to look up for the gut documentation because I would like to test if uh, the class we get is some kind and I'm not sure if we can actually do this. So let us see assert and methods asserting. Fail test pending asset equal. So we can create we can different node node one. Is that's as it not equal as it the same as it same is just if it's same as it greater than as it not same as it true as it null as it between as it has string contains string ends has signal as it connected. Yeah, we have a lot of asset functions, but I s not seeing if we have something like class. Ah. Type of. I think type of is what we would like to have. So what we need is <coughs> this one. I think. So I would like to test it. So what we have is assert type of and then I would like to check if the tile is actually type of tile then because we can go into our script we need the tile GD and there we can see the class name for the tile which we expect to be returned should be a tile and therefore we can test if the tile is tile um, if we run the test now he is saying invalid operands int and object int and object in operator because type is object and object is null okay we don't uh, like that we are getting null here of course so what we need to do is we need to fill out the create tile so what we can do is we return or better said we need the tile scene here and this is load res scenes tile and then we just create a tile scene instantiate I think so. I think so. Let's save. Let us throw up the test. And the test is still saying that it's null, but now we have an object here. The object should be a remote node to D. And the type should be also here. I'm not sure why type of is saying. I think the asset method is not working as I would like to have it. 
because they are not working the same way. Let us just test it. Type color. So maybe we need to use assert is. So I'm sorry for that. I'm not sure at the moment. We need to figure this out. But let's just do it. No. So assert is. Yeah, this is working. Okay. So what we are have done now is we have a working test actually which is testing our factory method that we when we create a tile we getting back a tile this is what we have what we expected and that brings us to the map and now we can say instead of using the create tile function like we here do we can just Go to the map really quick we can just do add a new variable on ready okay the problem is here already that we have on ready is it called first i think so so we have the tile factory which is a tile factory and it's get node tile factory and therefore instead of create tile here we would like to have the tile factory create tile and there we just doing the same as before now this function needs to be extracted we go into the tile factory <coughs> and we put it here and now of course it will complain a lot because we're doing a lot of stuff here and this is not done in the factory for now so what we now need is uh, we need to give it or let the factory also create the other attributes of the creation instead of just returning a, a tile scene which is instantiated so what we need is we have a far tile here or an instance better said and then we need to have the texture Yeah, we would we would need the texture and therefore we have the problem to fetch the texture this is actually this line we need the json image meter as well so for that we need a new function or we just add it to the create call we can just add it to the create call. I'm a little bit, yeah, I'm a little bit confused right now because I'm not sure what is the best approach to create the tile. I would say instead of having the image ID, which we don't need, instead we just take the texture here. So it's the texture name. And then we go back with this line on the map where is actually this one set. And then we say we have the JSON image meter right here. So therefore we can take JSON image meter. And this is the key for it. So in the factory, we now have the texture as parameter. As we don't change it from string, uh, there shouldn't be a failed in the test, but let us see. If I add line 12, must be instance 
parameter one must be instance of an object in create tile 12 there isn't 12 okay it's because of is of that what ah it's in the test file sorry 12 so and that is saying needs to be an object you passed null and this is because we haven't a return here i'm sorry for that <clears throat> so i fucked it up myself so now it's working again as before now we have the texture name what we would like to do is we would like to add the texture as we did before on the tile map instance so we have the tile map instance and we say set texture And therefore, we had set it like this. Can already add it to do because we also need to refactor that. I wouldn't have the uh, asset loaded because I would like to have the right asset already in the factory. But that's no problem. So then we have the tile instance set cell cord, which then is the vector two. Actually, we can just <coughs> copy it over there because it's the same, more or less. So then we have some magic here for the uh, position and there we already have to think about a little bit if we would like to add this magic in the factory because i don't think that that's right in my opinion what I would like to have is I would like to have a tile instance set pixel cord and that's also a vector two and this should get position X and position epsilon <coughs> which we pass over here. So for this we need in the tile we need another function which is function set pixel cord which is cell core, uh, which is pixel cord, which is vector two, then self pixel cord is pixel cord. And what I would like to do is on the function ready, I would say the our position is the pixel cord. So what we are doing here is we set our initial position with the pixel coordinate and once the tile is ready in our tree of Godot, we just set the position to the pixel coordinate where the position should be. And therefore they should be arranged in this case. So what we have now for a problem is, we have a lot of problems I would say, because there is first the non-existent function set texture <coughs> because 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 it's a tile texture that texture I think ah, it's, it's, it's the same problem okay so it's the same problem because it's not added there so we also need to have a function with set texture 
is just the text no it's the texture i think it's the texture it's a texture of a tile td sprite texture to d is it texture to d and there i would say itself texture is texture and then we just add uh, texture which is texture 2d and then we say tile texture set texture texture let us run gut again and now we are passing again so the problem is right now i doing a lot of refactoring here without uh, without backing them up with the tests, which is not cool because I have told you that we should first having the right tests and afterwards doing the refactoring. Now I'm just uh, moving a lot of stuff around without uh, doing the right tests for it. So I'm a little bit unhappy with that. Um, <clears throat> But nevertheless, we need to do it in some way. We need to start any, anywhere, and uh, this is where we start at the moment. So another point we have is the Z index. So last but not least, we also need a Z index, which is an integer. And therefore we can say, the set index is set index. And for this, we need the set index. Yeah, the problem we have now is because I have uh, extracted the function out, we of course need to do this calculation somewhere. So I would like to write this calculation in another component of the map so we have in the map we have the tile factory now we have a tile container and we have the grid data now what we now would need is we need a component which is capable of calculating the positions inside the map to get the right uh, position for the tile. And I wouldn't, yeah, I, I'm not sure if I like it, if the positions are calculated by the tile factory. Let me think about it. Hmm, I'm a little bit unsure. But we need to have the position somewhere. Otherwise we can't uh, extract it out. And we need some kind of uh, function which is uh, doing that. So in first place, I would say we create a function inside the map and afterwards we can maybe extract it. So what we need to do is We need to calculate the right positions. So let me just comment that part in. And then we just, it's a little bit scrappy right now. We will clean it this mess in a minute. So we can already delete it and say, function calculate 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 tile position and there we just add our stuff 
And now we are saying we have a position which is a vector 2. Let's just initialize it with 0 and 0. And afterwards we say, let's say calculated position. As I said before, <laughs> name your variables as good as you can because then we know what they are actually standing for. So what we would like is, I would like to calculate the position x like before with the tile size. The, the mathematics shouldn't change. Um, why is it? D is now giving us problems. So post x is not defined. Therefore, we need a position x. Calculate tile pixel position. Pixel position is calculate tile pixel position. And there we give it this and then we have pixel position dot x and pixel position dot epsilon so what we are getting here is an integer and we get a post epsilon integer <coughs> the tie size so what what is now the problem oh, i missed one what is your problem there Pixel position is not defined. It's not true. It's over there. So we will, we will refactor that in a minute. Let us just go on here. So what he is now from problem is that the tile is not defined, of course, because it's not the tile anymore. It's the calculated position epsilon. And there we have the offset and we have to start drawing and then we have the Z index as well. <clears throat> so what this functions is returning is actually, we would like to return a dictionary with position calculated position let me just check go dot four dictionary <coughs> all right so with square uh, with uh, this brackets of course calculated position and we have the z index which is representing our Z index. No, I don't think we need this anymore. This is calculated. Come on, go out. What's up? And then we have the calculate title pixel position. position is also depending on the, no, the, the position is defining the Z index. So the problem we have in this function is a little bit that it's doing two things. It's creating the Z index in the calculated position. Mm. I'm not too happy with that. Because now we have to say something like and Z index. To make it more clear what we are doing here so we have this and then in the variable it's a little bit pixel position pixel position <laughs> and z index dict and as you can see it's, uh, well, it's it's totally scrappy and then we have to say something like uh, position 
x position dot epsilon and position no and uh, z index so to make it a little bit better readable i think we can also do and go dot uh, this approach so as you can see our uh, create tile factory function is now a little bit more complicated or at least it takes a lot of parameters but these parameters are already everything that our factory needs so let us kann ich geschrieben werden was was soll das denn jetzt I have no idea. So let us run the tests again. The tests are is now saying that we are missing the parameter six, which is actually the Z index. That is absolutely correct. So we run it and the test look be fine. Now the big moment is if the map is actually working. And as we can see, the map is not working. And that's why, because we don't add the tiles anymore. So what we are getting here is we get a tile out of the factory and we need to to add the child as tile to actually see again our map so hopefully i haven't destroyed anything it looks fine for now um i'm not pretty happy with the code on the map <laughs> So we didn't improve it a lot. We just uh, moved out the create tile function and created, therefore we created some more code. We need to refactor this in a minute because this is uh, not, not cool, what we actually have now. I'm not too happy with that outcome, but at least uh, it's working again. So what we are doing here right now, or what we have changed, better said, what I have changed is I uh, created functions which only has run responsibility now. Before we had a create function which was, which had, no, how I say it, the create function we had before was calculating the pixel position, it was creating the tile scene, and it was adding the tile scene to the tile container. So I extracted that out of it and now I create these three calls. So it looks a little bit more, it's just because oh, I write it, so I write that. And it's just uh, three calls. Yeah, I think I will do it the way around. The problem is I actually don't like so long constructors, but in this case, we need it like that. We will see later if it's uh, usable or not. <clears throat> but what we have created are these three functions now. The first function is calculating our tile position and the set index. The second function is now creating our tile and the map itself is adding the tile map to the container. And so we split it the responsibilities in different functions, split it then up. And if you know, this one looks still crappy and it looks still messy, the whole map. We have, as I said, to refactor it. But if we are going now to the factory itself, the factory itself is pretty easy. We just give them the uh, attributes a tile need and we just set them. And this allows us to have a very, very clean create tile factory function and with this one i am pretty happy with just one 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 <laughs> exception and this is the set texture because we are now using the set texture we are loading better said we are loading the assets in this line by the texture name and I would say 
what we would like to have here is we would like to have another component which is actually handling the assets instead of the tile factory. So what I would like to have here is another on ready. Is it on ready? I think it's on ready. Var, uh, let us say texture loading component. Let us go into the tile factory. We create a new node. This is the texture loading component. We create an own branch out of it to the tile map. We go into it. <coughs> we add a new script. It's the same. It's always the same approach as before. We go into the script. We go into the tile map. We create a texture loading component. We just name it class texture loading component. We remove the skeleton methods, not class, it's class name, I'm sorry. We go back into the factory. We say we have a texture loading component right here. And this is the get node texture loading component. And what I would like to do is instead of load, texture name, I would say texture loading component get texture texture name. And then I can remove the refactor and that's everything I would like to do here. And in the component, we now need the function, which actually is calling get texture. And we know it's already mine go dot it's something like that. Or was it, was it this? I have no idea. We need to return the texture map. We get a string, that's the texture name, and that's the string. Is it the string? I think it's the string. And then ret return it. Let us uh, just start up the map to see if everything is working. Yes, yeah, it's, it's working like that, and we have a new component read. So what... Uh, what we don't like is that we have now the, uh, uh, I don't get the name right now. What, what I don't like is we now loading the texture once when the get texture is called and then we get it. What I would like to have is that this texture loading component is already preloading the components. And then we maybe can get out of an, an array or, the, or in dictionary just all the already loaded components instead of loading them once when we need them. Yeah, that's, but that's something for the future. So uh, what I would like to do is future idea, having all textures preloaded and just picking them. Because we actually don't know the texture name. So what we would like to have, uh, what we need to do here is to have a function where on loading we load all the textures already but this is also later in the game happening by uh, some kind of loader or preloading loading screen and there we need to come back to this and uh, make it so let us go back to the tile factory we have now the tile factory is now pretty much done and I pretty much like it because we are just creating a tile scene. We instantiate it. We set the texture, we set the cell chords, we set the pixel chords, and we set the set index. And then we return the tile instance to the map. And the map is then added to, as a child. And as you can see, everything is working. So why I did it, I just want to explain one more thing. It's uh, the pixel chord. Instead of setting the position, we are setting a pixel chord and setting the position 
on ready. Why do we do this? I think, or as I said, the problem is we can't set the position at this point because if we would like to access the position at this point, we can't access it because the tile wasn't added as a child to the container. So in Godot, we first need to add a scene to the to the scene tree and afterwards we are able to set the position. But in this case, we of course want to first set our pixel position and create the tile. And then we would like to add the tile to the container, which we are doing here. Otherwise, we would have to set the position later on, which will be quite complicated. And I would like to have it everything in this factory. <clears throat> this is why I am doing that. I also think it has another advantage because of uh, the pixel position and the tile is knowing the pixel position, we are also now able to create some kind of animation or some kind of movement in the onReady function, if we would like to. So, for example, instead of just setting the position here, we could say the position is something like, uh, a little bit lowered and then we could on ready just move the tile up or something like that and so we would have a small animation for the map ongoing yeah that could be the case and that is uh, the possibility we now have with uh, this approach so maybe we play around with that in the future but for now, I would uh, stick to that and would say we have a tile factory with its attributes, which is just done for us. And I would go next to the JSON component, uh, JSON parser component, because this is the other part we had in our map, which is now quite complicated because we now have here the parser and the calculate position. And what I would like to do here as well is also having a different component for it. Yeah, and we will implement this also in a minute. I will go to a quick break and I'm back in a minute. So here we are again, and let us go on with the JSON parser component. So in the map, I would like to add another node to D, and I just say it's a JSON parser. Yeah, the, the question is already in the naming. If you name it like component, or if you just say, JSON parser because you know every node to D you create is, is a component, so we can just do it like that. Um, we then, as the usual approach, I think you know it already, we make a new scene out of it, we add a new script out of that, we put the script in the different scripts folder. We add a script, we have a script, we add a class name, which is our JSON parser. We remove our stop methods and we save everything. We add a test for it, not the scene, sorry, another script for it, which is test JSON parser. 
Um, we go into that. We extend from gut tests. We re uh, delete all the stop methods and we have a function test pause JSON and we pass it for now. We have our gut. We call the gut and in gut we see set texture non existence function get texture in base nil. What is this? Get texture. The problem is that the node is not done on the texture because we have the tile factory and is never ready because this is never called. Okay, so now uh, we have. I added the texture loading component before, and the test is now failing for our texture uh, for the tile factory because the tile factory in our scene is never added. To quick fix it, we could just do a child tile factory instance that should trigger the add thing and then it should work. Yeah. Um, this is the behavior of Godot, which actually uh, the ready function is just called when the child is added to the tree or to the scene. And once it's added, the ready function is called. If we don't add it like this, the ready function is never called. And that means that the, sorry, that the texture loading component is never added. And then of course we have a problem to fix that. Um, <clears throat> I would just stick to this approach that we just added as child and then everything is working like Godot would like to have it. But another uh, approach could be or would be that we create the tile factory with dependency injection already so that we add the texture component to it. Yeah, but that's just to keep in mind it was just uh, Thing. So we created a test for past JSON as we did before, and we did not have an asset here. The question is always if we start like that, what would we like to have as uh, an asset? Um, I would like to have the JSON parser, which is load rest scenes JSON parser. We then have our JSON parser instance which is the json parser scene in a uh, scene sorry instantiate and then we have our scene so for just stick to this approach and add it and we know that the ready functions are also called in the right way um, what we would like to assert here is i would create or i would like to create let's go in the map first um, we are doing the parsing here and we have the JSON string, for example, we have the JSON, we have the JSON meter. And what I would like to have is I would expect to get an object from the JSON parser, which actually just stores our map data. if that makes sense. So actually what we just want to have is, I would like to have something like JSON or better said, it's not JSON. I would have something like map data. That's something like the JSON parser. Get something like that. Let us go into detail in a minute. What we need to do is this one. We need these, po these both uh, things. And we go into the too much open here. 
we have a function which is called parse and there <clears throat> we then need to get the file and then pass the string out of it so what we would like to do is this and therefore we need a string which is the json string which is a string JSON data okay then we have the string we pass the string and we return the string for this so what we have in the parser JSON that's JSON parser pass name JSON parser pass name JSON parser It's a packet scene, it's not a class, I think. So um, what we then have is JSON parsing instance parse. And we give it a string like Oh, something like that. So we give it a string, which uh, should be a JSON data. And then what we get is uh, our data, most likely. And then we would like to have an asset equal, which is just something like data. dot x equals zero. Let us run the test and it says get invalid x on nil because he says data is null. So now we need to, to understand why. Ah, because we access a file here. <coughs> I'm sorry, so this is a file name. And then we parse it out. I'm sorry. So what we have done here, the JSON data, which is this one. So let us go into the test again. And there we say something like this. Then we run the test again. And it says invalid X on dictionary, which is uh, right because the data is now our map data. And uh, I was just do something like that. <coughs> we check if it's a dictionary. Bullet in time cannot be used as name on its own. Yeah, Godot is sometimes a little bit uh, tricky to run it. Uh, to run it. What is what is this? How did you get there? I have no idea. So all tests passed and the tests are fine and uh, right for now. 
we have the JSON parser, which just read. So the JSON parser is actually quite simple for now. It's just too much, too simple for me um, right now, because what we are getting here is just what we have before. So we haven't, we haven't uh, save too much line what we have now is we have the map data and we then can use in our map the json parser um, we don't have the json parser yet so what we need to do is on ready for json parser which is our json parser and it's get node json parser therefore we then can say in the map data json parser parse and there we say json data and then we can remove this and we save just one line for that and then we have map data so and instead of json we then have map data dot map and here also map data dot map so we need to change every JSON in map data. And also the placement map data. So this is what we have uh, achieved at least. That we have now just one call which is giving us the map data back but i'm still not too happy with the parsing in general because we are still doing too much too much here <clears throat> so what i'm uh, aware of or what i would like to change in the whole map approach right here is i would like to don't have the parsing of the initial json into the map to create it like that of course we need to do it somewhere we need to go through the map data and we need to create it but my question is if we just can do it in another component no but i don't think so so what we need to do is we need to change the names a little bit um, so i would rename the past json to uh, create map because what we are actually doing in this function is we create the map. Let us remove the stop method also here. And this is actually creating the map. And this is not parsing the placement data. Instead, we are create placement cells. There we have the map data dot placement. And therefore we go into the create placement and we create the grid with the cells, which is already working. So the map now has the calculation of the pixel, the create placement cells, the create map in general. So what we need to do in future, and we just run it to see if everything working. Also what we need to do is to run the test if they working. Yeah, so everything is fine for now. <clears throat> um, I dislike the create map function for now a little bit and I dislike the calculated pixel position a little bit but we need to do it somehow somewhere and uh, yeah I'm actually pretty I can live with it I can live in the actual state as we have it but let us still look for some things. We have this tile scene, for example, which is never used anymore because we put it into another component. We have the JSON image meter. 
which is used over here. What we actually don't need anymore because it is this variable. So what I'm doing is a little bit of refactoring right now. We take this and then we can delete this one and then we can delete the JSON meter. We run all the tests, tests are working. We run our map, map is working. So we always need to secure if uh, our refactoring is not breaking any stuff. So let us go further. Then we have to start drawing. It's actually where the map is drawing starts and then we have the tile size and then we have the JSON data here. For now we need JSON data is this one, but it's okay, it's fine. So let us go into the component and we say it's started and it's done. So let us just uh, check the Twitch day seven. We created the standalone tile factory component. We created the standalone JSON parser component. And what we wanted to do is we want to create the highlight for placement and display it. Okay, so let us go into a little bit more graphic part. This is done in the tile. So most of the time we are just showing some code. So today <laughs> I will work with this highlight and then we can uh, a little bit do uh, a graphical approach. So what we are doing, I just let me close the stuff we don't need. And close other tabs. So that we implemented yesterday was the creation of the placement cells. What we are doing here is we are passing our map data placements and going through the placement cells and then into the grid we set our place, we, we set our cells to placeable. And uh, in this case the cell knows that it is placeable. For now it has, has no visual effect. So what we would like to add is we would like to add another texture, 2D, or another sprite, better said. And this we call the highlight. And we need to place it on top of the texture. And then we need to load actually the highlight i have no idea if i have it already inside here we need to look it up but i think it's all the map it's the objects these are map objects these are the map tiles this is the highlight for attacking this is the highlight for moving fine and where's the other highlights uh, <laughs> i have no idea these are all our units these are the highlight action. Ah, it's also a sprite. It's already an animated sprite. That's quite cool. So what we need to do is we need to change it to animated sprite 2D. And the animated sprite need an animation, which needs sprite frames. Then we need to go again to the uh. <laughs> where was it where was it where was it? it was in the no it was not in misc it was in texture it was in not in units it was not in sprites oh man i see it's just ah okay it needs another file type this one it needs the sprite frame and then we can actually add the frames which is hopefully being able to use it the assets texture map no, not map. Misc. 
We can't use it. Why we can't use it? Sprites, there it is. So what we need is this, but we need to split it up. <coughs> Man, I'm so uh, did, 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 did. I have to take a short break. I'm back in a minute.
So, sorry again for the interruption. So let us get this highlight working. Um, okay. Ah, now I understand it. Okay, the problem here I have right now is, that's why I love the coding a little bit more than uh, actually the working with the framework or with the engine. I'm not too familiar <laughs> with the, with how it works or how the different things work. But what we need to do is we need to adjust the size. It's two by five, six, two, five, six. It's horizontal two, it's vertical one, and we don't have some trend yet. And these are our both frames. So we have two frames. <clears throat> and this is the animation. I have no idea how I have, uh, have done the animation in the original. We could look it up. Do we want to have a look at there? Yeah, why not? Let us check out how we have done it uh, before. So it was the GDX project. We have the cell somewhere. We have somewhere a highlight. Could be that's also that's the tile. Go away. In the tile, we have the tile. We have a dirty, okay, it's not there. The tile, this is also no show. Sure. And the tile, we have a map, we have the cell, we have the gear grid unit factory. We have the unit. That are the skills. These are the map events, the packs, the data. This is collect. This is the models for it. This is a coordinate. This is the cell. This has no highlight. This was the renderer. We have a unit factory. We have the grid, which just gets the position. I was pretty much sure that we have somewhere the highlight. in the target. No, highlight JSON. That's what I would like to have. So we had a highlight class already here somehow. And this is doing the same as we want to do now. And what we have done is we created an animation out of the frames with 0 0.6. I think this is the time. So, was 0 0.6, I think one was one second, so let us stick to five. Uh, default animation. No, not new animation, I'm sorry. Okay, animation. One, one, five FPS. So why do we not seeing that? Ah, okay. It was wrong ordered. Everything is fine. <laughs> Everything is working. So what we now have is uh, our frame is changing and we have our animation right now as you can see um, we can stop it we can play it so let me think about it 5 fps 5 frames per second what we need is two frames per second. Yes, we would like to change it just once in a second. 
so it's two fps we have this animation highlight so what else we would like to do this is just one part the other part is the color i have uh, used a different color for it i'm pretty sure about that but i have no idea right now where i have defined it so we had a draw we had a highlight we had a size no it was just the sprite highlight it was in atlas class create sprite highlight that's absolutely right but where was the color defined set color highlight green in colors so somewhere in the core we have something like colors in util let me see if we can find it util colors and there we have some highlight green and that was the green we used so let us go into godot there we have material visibility and then we can pick modulate and then we can insert our green this is the highlight color that's not right insert come on Self modulate, it's visible. It looks a little bit weird. And not too green at all. I like green, move green, place green. I think what I need is place green. This, uh, because I know that the play screen was a little bit darker. Like that, yes. This is the play screen we would like to have. Okay, what we need to do is we need to go to the tile go to the script and create a variable which is the placement color eh, that was wrong from string let me check if we can create a color out of the hex code yes with HTML. So what we need is HTML. Then the color hex code. And then we have the placement color right there. Set placeable. So what we need to do is The sprite frame is completely right. We need to hide the highlight. So we need to do on ready. Uh, we need a highlight, which is an animated sprite 2D. 
and we say it's get node highlight and then when we point the uh, when we set the cell as placeable i would for now it's not the final code but uh, for now i would like to show the highlight and if i am correct then it should work already no it doesn't <laughs> it doesn't Okay, but why? So let's first check if we are going to get here. We don't. And this is because the grid is doing the work. But it sets a cell set placeable. Hmm. Okay, well now we need to debug a little bit, really. Something seems to be wrong. We don't get any breakpoints. Why not? In the map set cell placeable. So let us just check where where the problem is. So here we get here we get there we are with the key red and the position. So the grid is called the grid is our grid which is grid data. And the grid data has the function set placeable. So we go further, we get set placeable. We get the cell coordinate one and zero. We go over and the cell is null. This is quite, quite interesting because this means we don't get any cell. So we need to debug a little bit more. Our placement isn't working from yesterday. Let's go on. We set the place cell. We try to get it. We try to get the tile in cells. And we can see here the cells is zero. Because we never added the cell tile. So, what we need to do is, we need to add tile to map. Therefore, we write a little function, add tile to map. Then we get the tile. And there we do the tile container add. And what we also need to do is we need to add the cell to our grid. So let us restart it. Now we get there. Now we have cells with an area of 100. And now we get to the cell. Now we set the placeable <laughs> and then calls the highlight show. And as you can see, it's working. With one exception, we don't have an animation right now. But uh, the placement cells are already shown.
in the right direction. What we now need to add is the animation. <coughs> and now I'm a little bit... Uh, set placeable, uh, set show highlight. So we create another function here. Or we can make it uh, public. No problem. And then we are going and set show highlight. And what we there need to do is we first need to show the highlight and then we need to start the animation. For that, I would like to look at to the help of the animated sprite sheet 2D because I need to see we have a string name animation. We need to get this string play. Place the animation with the name. So what we are doing is we name the animation highlight. Highlight, sorry, <laughs> highlight. And then we go to the tile and then we say highlight play highlight we save it we go to the map we start the map we have a typo we start again and as you can see the animation is working it's working this was quite cool so what we have done, let us do a little recap for the day. We have nine minutes left of the day. And I don't think we should, or we should, let us just start with the challenge map. It's not too much complicated, so we can add it. So we created the highlight for placement and display it. We included some animations. And now we would, I would like to start with the mushroom map I have uh, <coughs> set at the beginning of the stream. So the mushroom hunting is this one. What I would like to do is we go into the assets. So I am make a little bit of speed now <laughs> so that we can actually do it. Let's do it. So the map reload at the moment is at the assets data maps. And I would like to create a new file, a uh, new resource file, whatever, JSON. And we call it mushroom JSON. We put in our mushroom JSON and then we close it and we go back to our JSON data. And instead of loading map one, we are putting now the mushroom JSON in here. And this is already everything we need to do to reload. And as you can see now, we have a completely different map. And it's already working with the placements we have added before which is really, really cool. This leads me to two problems. We have two problems now on a challenge map. First of all, first of all, uh, first of all, uh, the camera, camera first view should be on placement. That's the first thing I would like to have. Everything we load a new map that the camera is positioned instead of the top left of the map, I would like to see my placement zones in the first screen of the camera. The second problem we have is <coughs> on this bigger map, the X coordinates seems to be way off. I would guess it's because of the sorting. Because what you can see here is we have, yeah, it's, it's, it's disordered, it's deformed. I have no idea why. But again, we had the same problem with the epsilon axis. So what I guess is that it's uh, some kind of the problem with the sorting key because we have done the sorting for the keys the custom sort here 
but we have not done it for the for the x so what we also need to do is i think we also need to do the map data map dot keys and let us uh, let us name then x keys is our map x keys and then we also need to do with custom sort i would guess with actually the same function And then we need to pass the X keys instead of the map. And then let's just restart it. Okay, it looks also deserted, <laughs> distorted. I have no idea what's the right name. That uh, wasn't also the case. Yeah, cool. Or not. That's a problem. And I am pretty happy that we have the problem right now because this is why I wanted to have another map loaded. <clears throat> because now we can see that we have still some problems in the drawing and we need to fix it for the other map. And yeah, actually that's, uh, that's why I wanted to load another map to actually double check if our drawing of the map is working correctly. And as we can see, it doesn't. The problem is, I have no idea why. Um, we could go through and debug it a little bit here. So what we would like to see is the map data. And then we would like to see the map. And then we see we have a lot of X coordinates, which are as usual. And then we have a lot of epsilon coordinates which are also no problem so they shouldn't be a problem so in my opinion there's something wrong <laughs> there's something wrong with this sorting again but I have no idea why. So let us try to get understanding what's wrong. To get an understanding what's wrong. Um, It has to do with the epsilon axis. Again. Okay, so let us see the sorting for the keys. We are here. And we have the keys. Which actually is wrong sorted. Okay, so ah, I see the problem. The problem is that Godot says that the zero <laughs> is the smallest. Then we have one six, then we have one five, and then we have one. So the problem is again this order here. I dislike it a lot, really. And I think it has to do because of the strings. So what I think we need to do is we need to cast it to int and then it should work but let us double check that so we are again going into the keys and actually it doesn't change anything <clears throat> so why is Goda telling me that this order is right Thank <laughs> you. 
Also, I have one question. I can't. Um, so I will just fi figure it out before we end the stream today. <laughs> I would like to have it. So we have the sort custom function. Yeah, it's it's void. It's just callable. Uh, sort as candying. Um eine Sortierung in natürlicher Reihenfolge zu erzielen, können wir Sort Custom. Yeah, we 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 use Sort Custom. That's actually pretty right. And I also think we are pretty right there. But I have no idea why he is actually doing this. <coughs> he shouldn't. He actually shouldn't say that. As candy. So let us test something. This one would be the other way around, in my opinion. Let us get check that really quick. So in this case, yeah, he's not sorting the integer values. He is sorting the string values. So we still have the problem that he is sorting strings instead of of integer values. But what I don't understand is if I cast it to integers, why is he not sorting it in the right way? Uh, go dot for array custom sort custom array sort by integer value. Now, what I sort in array items by FQNL. Custom comparison, if type of A. Currently, int is two and string is four. Okay, the problem is that our array has strings in it. I would like to test it with this code just very, very quickly. So what we have here is a custom comparison. And then we say something like help custom comparison. <coughs> Let us go on. 
Start custom in base area expected one argument. Start cannot convert string to callable. This is working. <laughs> okay, it's it's different, but also not the same. What I would like to see actually is in the custom comparisons, I get A is zero and A, B is this. I would like to see uh, var a type is type of a and var b type type is type of b. So let us rerun it and he say it's four and it's four. A type of int gives type four. It's string. So what we need is a. We need int, which is two. So this is always a problem with the types. I just want to say a little bit about that. Uh, the problem with the types is always if you have some scripting languages, because you need to ensure that uh, these types are the right types you actually want to work with. And if they are not, like in my case, then the results of type uh, algorithms, uh, sorting algorithms and stuff like that are failing. And that's actually pretty bad because we don't want that. So what I try now is I try to uh, cast it to int and we go on with that. And with int, it should be have the right sorting order. Yes, so we have the right sorting order now. And as you can see, now the map looks very different. So this is how the map should be rendered. This is working now. Now we need to see if we have killed the other one. But we haven't. Now it works both. Okay, both are working fine. So I will do a recap about this tomorrow. I think we are done for today. Um, yeah, actually, we pretty much uh, achieved a little bit. And uh, I think it's uh, pretty cool. We have a new map now. We have the highlight animation. We have uh, some components for the factory and for the JSON parser. So in the end, we have done everything we wanted to do. And tomorrow we can maybe start with our first units or yeah, doing placing the first units on the map. I think it was a good progress for today. I hope you enjoyed the stream, even if it was a little bit interrupted by myself. But yeah, I think we, we've done good today and we will do better tomorrow as usual. So have a nice day. I will see you tomorrow, same time. Bye bye.